Welcome to the Books on Air podcast. I'm Suzanne Harris, and on my podcast, I like to talk to the authors about themselves, about their books, and about their ideas, because authors have all kinds of things to say in addition to what they say in their book. Joining me today is someone I really can't wait to introduce you to. She is just so positive and so wonderful. Her name is Johanna Furkert, and she's lived... No, I mispronounced that, didn't I, Johanna? It's Furkett, right? That's right. Thank you. (laughs) Okay, certainly. She's here to talk about her wonderful book, Do You Need a Hug? Joanna, sorry for the mispronunciation. Welcome to Books on Air. It's such a pleasure to have you. It's wonderful to to do this with you. You know, I love the book. Do You Need a Hug to Me is just a book that's so right in the time that it needs to be here. And I think the story behind how the book came to be is very interesting because you weren't a writer before you decided to write this book, were you? No, this is a a first-time project for me, and I had these words come into my head for months. It was almost like nine months, the same words every night, exactly the same words over and over and over. And finally I thought, okay, this isn't going to go away. I better write these down. And I just typed it out. It was only a few minutes. Typed the whole thing out. And uh, it was the tail end of 2019. Um, And then, of course, it got busy with Christmas. And after Christmas, uh, I had to move my mother into a nursing home. And everything stopped. And then, of course, COVID happened. So I had virtual learners here for a couple of years. Wow. So everything went on the back burner, and this past September, my mother passed away in August, God bless her. She um, was 94. She had an amazing life. It was a gift for God to take her, and it was a gift to us to not see her suffer anymore. And then out of the blue, Ex Libris called me and said, are you still interested in doing this book? I said, why don't I send you a manuscript, and you can tell me if it's worth putting into a book, and it took maybe three minutes for them to call me back, and so then it was done. What do you think happened? Why do you think you were, you know, what what you described to me is an inspiration. It sounds like you were inspired by something that wanted you to write this book. Do you have any idea what that inspiration might have been? Well, there's lots of different situations that you get into on a day-to-day basis. But one time in particular, I was in the grocery store and there was an older gentleman and he couldn't figure out what he wanted to take or what he was going to eat for lunch. And I says, you look like you're really struggling here. These grocery stores are so big. It's just... It's just a nightmare sometimes to know what to buy. And he looks at me and he goes, well, my mother, my wife passed away uh, just not long ago. And and now I have to figure out my own food without her. And I says, well, what's your favorite or what was your wife's favorite? And he said she liked tuna. And I says, maybe today's tuna day. And then he went on to explain that him and his wife would go dancing all over North America. Can you imagine? They were married 63 years. They'd been to every state and every province in North America. Wow. And they danced, and he told me his story, and I told him my story about my mom, and and we gave one another a hug, and he was crying, but he was smiling when he left. Wow. And so he changed my life, and I know I changed his What a chance meeting. Yes. I mean, that's amazing. You know, sometimes things like that happen. And there seems to be no rhyme, no reason. Just all of a sudden, you're there with another person, and something Mm -hmm. sort of magical happens. Yes, and your spirit knew it needed to speak with this gentleman. And you had this beautiful interaction And it changed both of us. I'm sure it changed both of us. 
I agree because your book is is exactly that. Do you need a hug? Is almost what you would have said to this gentleman first, right? In a yes. way, yeah. Yes. Yes. I really yes. like what you've done with this, and the cover shows. Now, there's a young girl, or she could be just a young person, who is the main character of the book, and she's the mm-hmm. the person that we follow. Let's give our listeners just a little bit of an overview of what the book is about, and then let's talk about a couple of specifics. Okay. Well, this little girl sets out to make the world a better place, and so she she wanders off and she meets an older man and she meets uh, she meets a dog in in a park and she gives the dog a hug and makes him feel good and she comes uh, to a garden with a lady working in her garden I'm not I don't have it exactly on the right pages here but anyways when she gets to the garden she hugs a, a sunflower and there's a bee on it and I feel that all good energy makes things more wholesome. And so we need to respect our plant life, our animal life, our insects, everything. And when you appreciate and if you treat nature and and all of those things good, you're going to get positive responses. And I think that's what, when she says the bee looked at her kind of funny as she hugged the sunflower <laughs> and was right in the bee's face, the flower vibrated like it knew it was getting a hug. The bee looked surprised but seemed content and went on collecting pollen. To me, that's representative of representative of just nature and 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 everything on our planet that we need to nurture and take care of and and hug it. <laughs> Joanne, I couldn't agree with you more. Do you think that you have that philosophy partly because you're a farmer in Canada? Uh, yes, a farmer in Canada, and uh, but also how I was raised by my parents. Um, being a farmer myself, too, certainly, like, it's very nurturing and... Um, you 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 just know you just know that and we've done tests we've done tests with plants that if you if you ignore a plant you don't nurture it and you don't take care of it and you don't speak nice things to it it doesn't do as well <laughs> I love that it. you love <laughs> I love and it my my mother always said to me if you get a flower from someone it will do well but if you steal a flower or if you take seed and you didn't ask for it, that flower will not flourish. Oh, I like that. I like so, that. Yeah. So when 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 we give off good energy and when we're positive and live right, that energy spreads all around where you are. And you get what you give. So <laughs> that's... That's just life. You See, get what you give in life. And I can feel that in your voice. I can hear that in your voice. And the world right now, let's face it, is in such a mess. I mean, it, yes, it is. It just, and every day there's something horrible and negative, and uh, not just to adults, but children and war. And I, I don't know. I think we're really in a place where a book like. Do you need a hug is one that's really important. Now, this is not, I don't want our listeners to think this is strictly a children's book because it's really not, because that's, uh, not, no. what, that's not what you intended when you wrote it. No, I think that it's good for anyone, you know, and I imagine my, myself uh, or a, a mother or a father reading the story to a child, and then at the end, you know, they're going to give one another a hug. And it will benefit both. Oh, I can see grandparents reading it to grandchildren. Sure. I can see older siblings reading it to younger. I can see, I used to be a teacher. And so when I was reading the book, I thought of all kinds of things that you could do as a teacher. I mean, you talk mm-hmm. about plants in there. You talk about bees in there. You're studying a unit on bees. Studying, mm-hmm. bring even doing uh, 
I remember we used to do little things like grow avocados in jars. You know, you'd put the avocado in the water and watch yeah. it sprout and do those kinds of things. It seems to yeah. me that a teacher could do that with a unit about plants and use that as a way to talk about the environment and talk about exactly what you said. You know, let's mm -hmm. talk to our plants. Let's play Mozart for our plants. Let's do something like that positive for our plants. I just love That's what great. you've done. I've just loved what you've done. It's just a terrific little book. Um, well, thank you. Oh, certainly. No, certainly. Now, the cover has a picture of a little girl and the sunflower. And I thought that that was so appropriate. And I remember as I was doing my homework that you said that you wished you had had the time to do the art. Are you pleased with the way the art came out for the book? I did do, I did do some sketches for the book, and I was very explicit. Um, and I, I sent in pictures. I sent in pictures of the old man and the old woman and the dog and the cat. Actually, the old man is my father. Oh. The old lady in the garden is my mother because she spent so many hours in a garden. My grandchildren tell me that's way too big for Oma. She was tinier. Oh, I love that. Did you take and the any... dog? Go the ahead. dog was our first dog, Boomer, and he lived to be 16. And the cat in the story is supposed to be Moses. And so I sent pictures of all these animals. And they all have a unique history, too, behind them, which is kind of cool. So it was just kind of commemorative. It wasn't supposed to happen that way. But I thought, oh, I have to draw the dog. How am I going to do that? I really like the idea of Boomer. And then I thought, I'm just going to do sketches and then send pictures to go along with the sketches. And they did an amazing job. It's really, it's really beautiful. I agree. It's very attractive. Are you an artist? I'm more of a landscape person than a people drawing person. <laughs> it's easier to draw trees than people. <laughs> I can't I even done a few, I can't even I do trees. Done a few tutorials. Well, how long have you been? Do you do sketches? Do you do oils? What's your medium? I would do more. Uh, I have done watercolor, and I have worked with acrylics a little bit as well. I keep wanting my daughter to help me because she's got an amazing gift. She's very talented at painting, and I keep thinking, you know, I could write some stories, and you could be my artist. And she goes, yes, but Mom, I work, and I live on a farm, and I have four children. <laughs> oh, besides that. <laughs> what? And then I just say, I know, but it would be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. And, you know, wouldn't it be special? Here's the other thing. Not only would the memories be special, but just think, in the future, future generations would have mm -hmm. copies of the books that their ancestors had done together. I mean, I think that's yeah. so powerful. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to talk your daughter into this. That would just be terrific. <laughs> yeah, that would just be terrific. Do you have any plans to write another book? Well, um... Lots of times I have in my head a story, uh, Little Joe and the Brothers. I have seven brothers, three older and four younger. So my parents raised eight of us on a small farm outside of Uxbridge, Ontario, which is about an hour northeast of Toronto. And I think it would be really fun to do. I have a visual of how I could do it in my head. Um, so one day maybe that will happen. And then um, we grew up needing to do chores and helping our neighbors and things like that. And so the, the other one, I have lots of doing chores ideas. I, I have some of them written down as well. I don't have them in a manuscript form, but I do have them in point form to develop. You know, I think a book like that, again, would be that positive energy that you would be pushing mm -hmm. out into the universe. And I just don't think we can get enough of that right now. I think it's just so important. And, you know, the kids 
have really had probably the last, what, three years, do you think? The kids have mm-hmm. had, had so much to deal with. And I know that here in the States, they, they keep talking about, you know, the, the scores and there's all the, the business with drugs and fentanyl and you hear all those things on the news every day. And I think mm-hmm. maybe kids mm-hmm. just need to hear something a little bit different. Yes, they do. And they were really isolated, too. Like my daughter, Leah, she says that her kids didn't even know how to act when they went into a drugstore. Oh, dear. (laughs) After being shut down for so long. And she's got a boy, two girls and a boy. And the girls are five and five and seven. And uh, they went into a drugstore and they just started screaming when they seen. (laughs) No, no. They couldn't believe what they were witnessing, so they were so isolated, they didn't know how to behave anymore. Wow. They couldn't believe what they were seeing in a drugstore. (laughs) Gosh, you know, it's just so true. I mean, and you're almost... You're almost afraid to go out the way you did before all of this happened, because now Mm -hmm. it seems like... You know, there's something bad that happens to somebody who's going to the grocery store. They were just going to the grocery store, and all of a sudden, some terrible something happens. So thank you so much for giving us something else to talk about and think about. Yes, let's not be afraid to touch one another and give one another a hug. A hug. I love that. You know, when our listeners become readers... They can find the book, and I want to make sure that they know where to get it. They can find the book on Amazon, and all they have to do is go to Amazon, just www.amazon.com, and there will be a big search feature. It's sort of a a light gray box, but it's a really long rectangle, and there's a little drop-down menu that's at the left-hand side of that, and if you'll drop down and find the word books and click on books, and then type the title of Joanna's book, Do You Need a Hug? Exactly the way it sounds. By Johanna, J-O-H-A-N-N-A. And then the letter A, period, Ferket, F-E-R-K-E-T. Click on it, and you'll see this adorable cover with this young lady who's got this giant sunflower. It's really, really pretty. And if you click on the upper right-hand corner of the representation of that book cover, you see two words. It says, Look Inside. And if you just put your cursor on that and give it a little click, the book will electronically open, and you'll be able to see some of the drawings that we've been talking about that are used to illustrate the book. It's just wonderful. You'll be able to read a part of the book, and it will pull you right in, and it doesn't matter what age you are. I really think that if you have a friend who's dealing with um, a health issue or someone who's lost a loved one, a book like this would just be such a welcome gift because it would be just special. You'd be giving them not only that hug in person, but the memory of that hug that they could have with them. So they could find it on right there on Amazon. Now, your publisher probably also has it on their website, right, Johanna? Yes, they do. It can also be purchased through Ex Libris. Dot com. Do you know if it's With, available anywhere else? Could they get it at Barnes & Noble or some of the other book outlets? I'm pretty sure you can get it at Barnes & Noble as well, yes. Good. Now, you've got a website. Let's, give yes. our, our, let's tell our listeners where they can find out a little bit more about you and a little bit more about the book. Let's give them the web address. All righty. It's www.j-o-h-a-n-n. A, A, F, E, R, K, E, T, dot com. What will they find when they go to the website? They'll find when they go to the website, do you need a hug? And my name will pop up. And if they click on that, um, they'll come right up into it. And and it'll they could contact me if they like. They could probably do a purchase through there. Um, this is all very new to me, so I'll be learning with, with every step I move forward with. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You're doing well. 
relax. <laughs> You're doing a great yeah. job. Now, you also have a Facebook page, I believe. Uh, yes, and it's just my name, Joanna Furquette. And when they go to Facebook, what will they find there? I know you talked about some pictures that were on Facebook. Yes, there's some, there's uh, there are some some pictures of uh, of Do You Need a Hug on Facebook. And you've started and a, a little a little blurb of information as well. So and you've started an Instagram account, I believe, as well. Yes, but I'm still not sure how to operate that. <laughs> that's in construction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's in construction. <laughs> I, I love it. Joanna, you are so delightful. It is just such a pleasure to talk with you. I always like to let an author have the last word about their book. And your book is just such a wonderful, positive experience. I mean, it's just, it's, I couldn't help but smile when I read the book, and especially when I was reading about the bee, because I had this giant bumblebee in my head that I could just see on that sunflower, and it made me smile because I, I think they're such interesting creatures. When our listeners become readers and they choose to do whatever they choose to do with the book, read it themselves, share it with a friend, read it with a child, read it with a grandchild, read it with a sibling, whatever they choose to do, they will eventually come to that very last page. And they'll read that last page, and then they'll close the back cover, either electronically or physically. What do you really want that le that reader to take away with them from the book? Positive energy. And hopefully not to be afraid to give hugs and reach out to people and to just be kind. Kind to themselves, kind to the people in their home and in their surroundings, their environment. Just reach out and be a good person. What a wonderful message. Thank you so much for being my guest today on Books on Air. It's been a delight to meet you, and I hope that we'll talk again when you write this next book. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for having me and listening. It's been wonderful. Remember, you can find Do You Need a Hug by Joanna A. Furquette on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. By the way, you can also hear this podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I so hope that you'll join me for our next Books on Air podcast, because remember, you never know who's going to be here, and you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so much for listening.